If you're watching this video, then you've probably experienced this firsthand, but the design industry isn't doing quite as hot as it was just a few short years ago. Ugh, I don't feel so hot. It seems like big tech companies are doing mass layoffs left and right, the designer talent pool is oversaturated, and if you're like most designers, you're asking yourself, how can I stand out from the crowd? Out of me! Well, there's a lot of answers to that question, probably the most important thing you can do to stand out is to have a great portfolio. As an art director with over 15 years of experience in the industry, I've hired my fair share of designers. So today I wanted to talk about what my thought process is when I'm reviewing portfolios, share some best practices with you, and talk about what works and what doesn't. Let's get into it. Hey everyone, welcome to today's video. I'm Tom Munns, and this channel is all about helping creatives just like you take your craft, careers, and confidence to the next level. But enough about me, today is all about you. Thanks to everyone that sent in your portfolios on the graphic design subreddit. And don't worry, if I don't get to your portfolio today, I will be doing this as a series moving forward, so be sure to leave a link to your work in the comments below. And without further ado, let's get into it. All right, so first up, we're checking out Jack Farrell's portfolio. First off, I had see already changed this from yesterday, so that's awesome. I think when I reviewed it yesterday, you had like a an image here of yourself and you had a, a section about your interests and things like that. So I think this is already a huge improvement. So kudos to you to taking that feedback from the Reddit thread and applying it here. I think this is a lot more effective, just having a, a quick little mission statement about yourself up here at the top that's pertinent to what you do from a design standpoint, right? I love the logo. I love that it's like an ambigram that you can kind of flip it around. It's a nice modern mark. This about me section and your interest, I honestly would probably put this on its own about me page. I do think it's interesting to kind of like learn about who you are and what you like to do in your free time. But I think at the top of your website, this is so important for someone that's coming here to look at it for maybe 60 seconds and figure out who you are, what you do, what you're good at and what your design acumen is like. Coming down to your work section, I like this simple grid layout. I will say you only have four projects here. Usually I would like to see probably six to eight to really get a good idea of what you do. Let's jump in and take a look at one of these pieces. All right, so Root and Bloom Counseling LLC. Um, it's a practice specializing in helping children in tough circumstances. A plant can bloom in the harshest of environments. So that's really nice to have that little snippet there so we can kind of get an idea of where your idea came from for this logo. So that's a great piece to start with. Then getting into the brief, a private counseling practice requesting an illustration of a Pacific Northwest plant growing through a tough barrier of sorts. Okay, so that's it's nice to have this context. I would say that I might frame it more from a problem solution standpoint. This feels more like the client kind of dictated to you what they wanted. So it makes it seem less like you were solving the problem and a bit more like you were taking orders from the client. So I might reframe that to be like, they came to me with a problem. Maybe they weren't getting enough clients or they were rebranding. They wanted to pitch themselves a bit differently to clients. So that's the problem. Then get into the solution, get into what you did kind of tell that story from start to finish. I like this. I love that you included the black and white version and just the logo, um, the lockup and then the word mark and then the color palette and the one color version. So that's really nice as an art director to kind of see that you thought through that full spectrum of needs and assets. As far as the alternate logos go, these are very different from where you ended up going with this logo, right? So this middle logo is very modern, whereas this one has that typewriter text. It's very organic. It almost feels like it could be like a vegan restaurant type of feel. So then looking at the final, this doesn't feel super similar to these options that you presented here. So looking at this, I'd be a little bit concerned that there wasn't a clear vision on where this logo needed to go. And I think that's something that's important, right? So the hope is that you would meet with a client, do a discovery session, figure out exactly what they were looking for, whether that's modern or typewriter or this more like, I would say, premium type of look you have up here. It's a little bit more luxurious and more professional look. So seeing that you explored such different approaches to this logo is a little bit concerning to where it makes it seem like you were just trying different things and seeing what the client liked instead of diagnosing before prescribing, if that makes sense. I like this kind of wrap up where you have key learnings 
I will say that saying a big thing I learned in this process was how a client may not always know what they're looking for, be able to express what they want to a designer. I know exactly what you mean and we've all been there for sure as designers where you're just trying to figure out what the client's looking for and they're not really able to describe it very well. But I will say I wouldn't include that in a portfolio piece just because it almost sounds like you're taking a dig at them, right? Like they didn't know what they wanted and I had to keep going back and forth and trying to figure it out. So I might rephrase that to make it sound a bit more, again, they had a problem and you solved it rather than saying that you had to like read between the lines because that makes it sound like the client wasn't very good at communicating. So just want to make sure that you're painting your clients in a positive light and making them look good in these pieces as well. Ooh, okay, so these are really nice. I really like these. I like your mock-ups. I love that you have them beside real plants. So you're doing some art directing when it comes to your mock-ups too, which that's really nice instead of just like slapping it on generic looking pieces of collateral. So I really like that. So yeah, overall nice piece. Again, maybe just work on telling that story from start to finish, show more of your thought process, talk more about the problem that you solved for this client, thinking about it from more of a, a storytelling perspective. Down here in the footer, it's nice that you have your email address. That's something that some portfolios don't have that. They just have a contact me page, right? So it's really important to have that email address in case people don't want to have to use your contact form and just want to email you from their client. All right, back to the home page. That's actually another thing is when you're on a page like this down at the bottom, it's really nice to just lead them into the next project. So just say, if you wanna see more work like this, check out this project. Right now with how it is, I have to then use your escape hatch to go back to the home page. I then have to scroll back down to projects and then choose another project. That's just something that would help out your, your UI UX. All right, so that was Jack's portfolio. Jack, great job, I, I like your portfolio. Again, I love that you changed this already since yesterday, right? It shows that you're open to, to feedback and to improving things and to continue to iterate on this design. So I think this is a nice portfolio. I love how clean it is. I like that you didn't go crazy with the amount of work that you included and you have some nice pieces, so great job. All right, so next up we have Tatiana Mondragon. This is cool, the first impression, like it shows your face, it shows your hobbies, like that's a really nice touch. I wonder if that's on purpose when it first pops up or if these are meant to be hover states because it does kind of seem a little bit busy when you first go to the website and it has all those different GIFs popping up, but they are really nice as hover states. So something to check if this is kind of the intended way for it to work is just these hover states, then yeah, just double check that. I love that you just start off with this like mission statement and a quick like who I am, what I'm all about. I think that's really important on a portfolio, just right off the bat, this is my name, here's what I do, here's where I'm located, here's my approach to design, right? And on top of that, you gave us a little bonus talking about you're into bouldering and shuffling. So that's really cool. I think this is kind of the perfect intro to a portfolio website, so great job there. As far as the domain name goes, it looks like you have a professional domain name that's redirecting, but then it shows the webflow.io domain. So I would just check your domain settings to make sure that it's like a permanent redirect to where we're not seeing this like .webflow.io. Not a huge deal, but it just makes it look a little bit cleaner, a bit more professional. I really like these animations you have, like they're very subtle, but they're really clean. They're not distracting. So. I think that's really important for a portfolio as well, right? Is having a bit of personality in there without taking away from the work or being distracting. So great job with those. We have some really cool projects here. Um, I'm also an Orlando based designer. So seeing like the Jam Hot Chicken branding is super cool. I go there pretty regularly and I, I always comment how much I love that branding. So that's amazing that you worked on that. Let's check out one of these. Let's go into the Valencia College. Oh yeah, that, that animation at the top is super clean. I love that. Again, very subtle, but um, just enough to make it interesting. I love this blurb that you kick off with here, description of the project of Valencia. This is a really nice length to where it's enough for me to understand the project, but not too much to where it's an overload for me to read. I also love that you have the role here to kind of talk about what your role was with the project. That's really important. And then credits too. Again, this is a, a great example of how to lay out a portfolio project. This way I know what you did, what the project was about and your role in, in the actual project itself. So love to see that. It's a cool little animation of the Puma. I would say if I'm nitpicking, maybe make this animation loop right now. It has a harsh stop at the end there. so. With this being the first piece of artwork in this portfolio piece, it's always great to make a make a big impact. So just looping that might help clean it up a little bit. This is cool too. So you're giving us context as you go through the portfolio. You're telling that story, just so important. So I love that. 
So here you're showing us kind of the initial campaign before you even get to the mascot. So this is a really nice 360 view of the before you even get to designing the mascot and then the actual process of the mascot itself. So I love this showing kind of your thought process, showing the early concepts, showing where it came from to show the evolution, again, telling that story. And while these are concepts, they're still really well done, right? These are really clean. They're really well thought out concepts, well laid out. Ooh, this is really nice. I'm I am a sucker for hand done script. So that is great to see that not only did you do illustration and vector and, and all this thought process, you also did some custom typography. You have the different logos here. So you thought through the entire brand identity, not just the one logo, but how it lives, where it lives, showing mock-ups like these are beautiful. This is really well art directed photography with the students, the shirts, the flag. So this is amazing, even a, a statue. Wow, this is really cool. So now even getting into like the physical mascot, talking about working with Universal, putting together persona, putting together guidelines for the Puma. That's super cool that you guys thought through that and included that in this brief. Pins and badges, man, this is this is a, an incredible project, Tatiana. I'm super blown away. And then even lessons learned. I mean. That's the perfect way to wrap this up, right? So you told the whole story from the beginning of the concept, the thought process, the work that went into it, all the different deliverables, you thought through everything, and then you wrapped it up with lessons learned, what you came away from. So really, I don't have uh, <laughs> many critiques here. I'm sorry, but you did such an incredible job with this that besides those couple of very tiny little nitpicks, there's not much to, to improve here. I think this is like a a really well done project. I love down here you have more work. So instead of having to go back to the homepage and, and find your work, you've thought through the UX of just letting someone continue to go through these projects one after another. Let's see what happens when we click say hey. Okay, so that's a minor piece of feedback here is instead of just say hey and this linking to a mail client, just like a UX best practice, I guess you could say, is just to put your email address down here. For myself personally, I don't like to use the default email client. So just being able to copy and paste your email from your portfolio to my preferred client would be my preference. Oh, that's super cool too. I love these little moments of delight where your logo animates when you kind of hover over it. Again, I think portfolio should be pretty reserved when it comes to design, but little moments of delight like that where you have small animations that kind of show your personality and your take on things. I think that's a really nice touch. So your next step, let's check out the Jam Hot Chicken identity. So again, you start off the same way, talking about the description of the project. And I love this as well. If you won awards for whatever project that you're showcasing, definitely put that at the top because that shows that not only did you think it was a great project, but other people did too. That's really nice to have on a portfolio piece and it adds a lot of legitimacy and social proof. I love this. A lot of the times I feel like design is a bit too subjective, right? It's hard to put metrics behind it. It's hard to determine ROI, things like that. So starting it off with actual statistics and metrics, talking about the launch, talking about how many sandwiches you sold and Google searches, social media followers, things like that. This is a great way to showcase ROI on a branding project, right? So I love that you thought through that. <laughs> I love that you got the, the Tracy McGrady comment because I know a lot of these illustrations are kind of Orlando magic, basketball, pop culture. So that's really cool. I love the logo. I love that it's a little bit like hand-drawn looking mixed with the serif font. So that's like a nice juxtaposition there. You have really nice use of animation here where it's not too over the top. So it's kind of like every other piece animates, not every single one to where it becomes overwhelming. This is really nice to see that you thought through the whole style guide and that it's not just a logo, it's a brand system. This is a cool way to kind of show the brand in action and show those the patterns and the people interacting. So the use of Video elements here is really nice. I love these illustrations, like they have so much character to them. There's a lot of like little uh, Easter eggs. Nice to share some detail shots here. Showing it paired with the food, that's really important, obviously being a sandwich place. Showing the feed, that's really nice that you've done kind of a series of Instagram posts where they overlap and they've checkerboarded to match the, the sheets that go with the sandwiches. Well, that's kind of crazy. So you made a, a mini MPC app. Yoga claim. <laughs> All right, uh, let's get back to the review. So that's like a, a really cool project to include. It shows that you didn't just stop at a, a brand or a logo and a style guide. 
You went above and beyond, you put together a beat machine that actually works and it has all this character of like pop culture references and things like that. So that's really fun. That's exciting to see as someone that's looking at portfolios that it's not just kind of the same old same. It's something that is really interesting and shows your thought process and your dedication to a project. So love to see that. Yeah, so overall, like, I'm sorry, I don't have more uh, critiques for you, but like, honestly, I think this is one of the better portfolios I've seen in a very long time. You've really thought things through. It's well laid out from a UI UX perspective. The work is super strong. So I don't have a ton of things I would change. Like, uh, I think you killed it. Amazing. All right. So next up we have Jacob Johnson. Um, so let's check this out. So first off, I like that it's just a very clean portfolio. It's just white and black, simple sans serif. There's not a lot of craziness going on. So I like that. I would say that there's not a lot of context here, right? So I would recommend starting off the top just with a quick elevator pitch. Say, hi, my name's Jacob Johnson. I'm a graphic designer. I focus on branding projects for these type of companies. Here are some of the results I've gotten. Here's my approach. Just a quick like two or three sentence blurb, just so I can really quickly get an idea of who you are, what you do, and what you're all about. Let's jump into one of these projects. So this is a dining hall food waste reduction campaign. Initial thought, like I like this layout you have here a lot. I like the like the trendy sans serif font you have here. It matches well with the illustrations. I like the mock-up you chose. I like just like the flat backgrounds. So that's a nice way to kind of kick this thing off. So this is nice. So you're starting things off with some um, context, kind of talking about what this project's all about, talking about California State University, the initiative. These are cool. I love the, the social campaign you have here. I will say one thing about these like monoline icons that I'm seeing is the weight is kind of changing. So like on this detailed hand with the sushi, it's a very thin and detailed illustration, but then the rest of them are kind of more simple, thicker monoline icons. So matching those up a bit better. Kind of the same thing here. We see this hand above the 4,000 pounds of food. And then again, looking at this one, this is like a really detailed hand. And then this one's just like an icon. So there should kind of be like a style guide to these icons, right? So maybe just matching those up a little bit better across the board would be one slight nitpick. I love that you showed the signage in the actual cafeteria. So we're seeing it where it lives. That's always really important in a portfolio is not just to show the work as a exported JPEG of what it looks like, but actually showing it in the environment where human beings interact with it, right? So great job there. One thing that would be really impactful here is to show what sort of metrics this campaign achieved, right? So this campaign was all about food waste. So did it work? If, if it did, how did you measure your success? Did you save 10,000 pounds of food from being wasted over a six month period? Something like that. Like this seems like a type of campaign that's very measurable. So it'd be great to see those kind of metrics to reinforce that this was a really successful project and we have the stats to prove it. That's something with portfolios I always like to call out is anytime as designers, we can implement statistics, we can implement um, metrics, we can show real ROI, we can show real results. I think that's so, so important for us to do, right? So I think that'd be a great opportunity to do that here. I love down here at the bottom, you have a more work section, so I don't have to go back to the homepage. I can just keep browsing, check out this Sonos digital retail experience project. So it looks like you're kind of kicking off with a video. So I'm kind of assuming from the early part of this video that this is like a UI UX project for this Sonos app. It looks like it kind of scans in your house and probably sets up the optimal way to get your speakers oriented. So this is a nice little intro. Once again, I will say that it doesn't really describe your role in this project. So assuming this is a real app you guys made for Sonos, I imagine like you listed three or four people here. They're part of the team. So it's important for me to know what your role was, right? Did you just do the UI for the app? Did you do UX research? Like, did you just make this video? Like kind of give me more context as far as this is the project and here's exactly what I did within the project, just so I don't have to guess. So this is nice. It shows you, you did some, some research, right? You put together some customer profiles, you researched like mood boards, interiors that these might live within, start talking about the Sonos app. So like, I really like the look of this. It's very minimal. It's very just like stark black and white, very modern. This is a cool way to lay it out where it's just kind of screen by screen talking about each part of the app. 
Again, my only question as I'm going through this is what did you do as part of this project? Like what was your role within it? And again, it seems like this is another great project to reinforce the success of it with metrics, right? So if you launched this app for Sonos, how many people downloaded it? What was the, the time they spent in the app? What were the key results? So presenting, this is the problem that the client had. This is why they wanted the app. These are the results that we got and we show that it was a successful project, right? Cool, and let's take a look at one more. This looks really cool. It's a bespoke whiskey packaging. Wow, this is really like, this is incredible. This is really like eye, eye popping, right? So first off, this hero image, I love that. This is really impactful. This really draws you in, it catches your attention. The name is derived from the Japanese word meaning voyage, aged in small batches and specific ocean voyages. Wow, that's crazy. So they actually like aged this on a boat on the ocean. That's absolutely wild, that's super cool. And yeah, that's great because it adds so much context to the design of this bottle. You can really see that the ripples of the ocean, it said this is actually part of the, the whiskey barrel. It's like the piece of wood here. So, I mean, this is a really stunning piece of work. This is really well thought out. I love the animations here. I like that you have kind of the texture and the background subtly keeping like the, the ripples, the water effect going. So that's a nice little video piece. So, wow, that, that's incredible. I don't know if this is a real a real company or just a passion project but i think honestly this is probably your strongest piece from a design standpoint it shows you understand art direction concepting so i might move this to the top spot just because this this really blows me away this is an incredible piece so nice nice work there great portfolio jacob i really like it you have some strong work i like how simple it is i would say it looks like you have five pieces here maybe you could use one or two more if you feel like they're strong if they're not five totally good one thing that is very true is that the designer is only as strong as their weakest portfolio piece. So um, if you don't have another one that you think is as strong as these, then you made the right choice to go with five there. But overall, great work. All right. So here we've got Roberta Stanich. I hope I'm saying that correctly, Roberta. First off, I love this uh, header you have here. I love the simplicity of it, the contrast of the typography of the sans serif and the italic serif. It gives me a quick overview of your name and what you do, where you're located, so that's great. And then these icons are, are really fun as well. I really like that and it kind of shows your skill set, so that's really cool. They even have like a little subtle animation on them, so love to see that. Again, like we've talked about with past portfolios, you have a really nice balance of it being very clean. You can tell that it's about the work, but you still have some character. You have these illustrations, you have a bit of animation. So I think that's a really nice balance you have between showcasing the work and adding a little bit of your personality in there. All right, so let's take a look at websites. Okay, so this is taking a really long time to load. It looks like you have like a 3D effect on this. I might find a way to, to optimize that. I don't know if this image in the background is too large or what's happening there, but at first I didn't think that image was gonna load. I just thought it was like a black on black layout. Like it's a cool effect. I don't know if it's worth it taking five seconds to load. So that might be a trade off to, to think about. It's nice you're giving us a quick little description here, your tools. So it talks about the use Figma. So that's nice to know what sort of software that you, you like to use. This is a nice little hero image here on this website. Ooh, this is really cool. I really love the, uh, the grid animation you have here to where we can see the page without the grid, but we can also see your thought process behind it. I love this, like the bento box look that's really popular right now. That's a really clean execution of that. I like seeing these different deep pages so we can kind of see how different pages on the website live. It's nice seeing it here mocked up onto a laptop. I will say this laptop isn't the best looking. I don't know if this is a real photo that you cut out or if it's a mock-up or what, but but I might recommend using like a bit more of a 3D mock-up where you can see the whole laptop. Maybe it's like at an angle. I feel like those kind of make it a bit more, a bit more sexy looking. You can tell again, as we look throughout these different pages, you have a really strong understanding of the grid, of typography, of hierarchy. We're seeing this nice title font, and then you're contrasting it in color and size with the body font, and then also the subtitle. 
So I'm getting all those things just from these deep pages. So that's really important to see. I love that you have a link to the live website as well. I feel like, and I'm guilty of this myself, but a lot of the times you kind of see all this work, but then it's not a live website. So seeing images is one thing, but seeing a, a website in actions, another thing altogether. So that's great that you included a link to the live site there. There's a really clean project as well. I love these phone mockups. These are really nice. I like that it shows that it's uh, obviously mobile friendly and responsive. There's a great use of foreground, background, middle ground here with this hero image, incorporating that with the typography. So that's a really strong hero image. And so, yeah, these are really, these are really nice. It shows you have a range, right? Like you're doing these kind of more real estate looking websites, hotels, things like that. You're also doing websites for what looks like a food blog. So this is doing a great job of kind of showing me your capabilities and your range as a web designer. So nice job there. Again, love that at the bottom here, you're just directing us to keep going with new projects. So let's check out this maze project. So one thing I'm seeing here is that you have this transparent navigation, which looks really nice, but it does cause problems sometimes as we're seeing here where your name is kind of overlaid with visual identity and web design and then the portfolio and about are getting lost in the body text. So potentially using like a, a low opacity overlay behind it could be a solution there to make it a bit more legible, a bit more user friendly. This is a nice animation with the gradients here. I like the contrast of the, the thick serif to the smaller sans serif fonts. It's a really nice mock-up of the business cards. I kind of want one of those. <laughs> it's a really cool way to showcase the color palette instead of the more traditional, just like boxes with text to actually animate it like this. It kind of shows not only did you think through the actual colors, but you're, you're taking it the extra mile, right? Like you also did some nice animations. These are really cool. I love this style of illustration. I love seeing the gradient repeated throughout these different tiles you have here. Same thing with these social posts. Like I see that you understand the, the brand typography. You're reiterating the title font being like this really thick serif and then combining that with the smaller sans serif. So seeing a lot of continuity here, which is really great. It's really important for me to see that you understand those things. And then here we, we're seeing that you brought it all to life, right? So all those different gradients and illustrations and assets and mockups are all living on this website. So that's a really great way to kind of walk us through the logo, the identity assets, and then showing it all coming together. So you're telling that story, which again, you didn't use a lot of text, but you still told the story using visuals. So that's a great job there. I'll come back to the home page. Let's see the about page. Again, it's nice that you have an about page, kind of learn a bit more about you, but it doesn't take up that very important real estate on the home page, right? I love this illustration. Again, it's well art directed from the illustrations we saw on the home page. So you're carrying that motif throughout. I will say one thing that I'm missing here um, is a contact, right? So if I love this work and I really want to hire you for um, my next logo project or as a, as a full-time role, I don't have an email to reach out to you, right? So at the bottom here, you have like your LinkedIn and Behance and Instagram. So I can use all those and that's great, but uh, it's just nice to have an email, just a, a direct contact. So I don't have to like go through the trouble of adding you on LinkedIn, waiting for you to accept, sending you a message. So that's one small critique that might, might help out a little bit. Overall, Roberta, this is a beautiful portfolio. Incredibly well done. I can tell that you have a very strong understanding of design foundation, of type, of layout, of web design. So not a lot that I would change here. Really, really great portfolio. All right, guys, we've got one more portfolio to review, but before we get into it, I just wanna take a second to stop and see what do you think so far? Is this helpful? Can you apply this stuff to your own portfolio? Let me know what you think so far in the comments. Also, while I've got you here, if you could just take one quick second to like the video and subscribe to the channel, I'd really appreciate it. As a small content creator, every little bit helps. All right, that's enough of that, back to the review. All right, here we have Alec PNG. I love this little animation you have here at the top. It shows your personality and also shows your skill set, right? So it shows you can draw, you can animate. It's a really great way to kind of get across your personality without needing three paragraphs of text telling us those things. I like that you have a little blurb here off the top, kind of telling about who you are and what you do. I will say it, it feels a little bit generic. Like you're saying that you elevate brands through engaging design. You contribute creativity and make a meaningful impact. It just, it just feels a bit too high level, I think. Like I think most designers would say that they do those things. So finding a way to customize that a bit more, talking about your niche, talking about 
your approach to design, what makes that uh, unique. That might be a way to make that a little bit more impactful. Coming down here, we see your projects. This is a nice number of projects. You've got eight here, so that's kind of that sweet spot. Let's check out the CWC brand. You start off with a nice overview here, kind of talking about your role. So that's a nice way to kick things off. You talk about some deliverables that you work on, so I like to see that. It's a cool way to show off the work, like showing this video off the top. It auto plays, which is nice, so I don't have to click it. One thing with these icons is that they all feel a little bit different. They don't feel like they're all from like the same library of icons. For example, this one is really hard edges. It's really bold. There's a lot of black. And then if we roll it back, we can see this one now has like rounded edges. The line thickness is different. We have thin lines up here. And then we see the truck and it's different as well, right? So there's some really thin lines. It's hard edged again. So just kind of art directing all those icons to make them a bit more feeling like they're cohesive. That'd be one way to improve this video and show off consistency and show, show that art direction throughout. So coming down to this next area, I'm a little bit confused about what these are. Like it looks like these are maybe mailers and pamphlets and things like that. And they're also pretty hard to see all being on one image. So I would recommend maybe just taking whichever one you think is the, the best from each of these and blowing it up to take up the full width of the website. So that way I can really go in and look at the details and see your understanding of typography and layout and grid and things like that. So that'd be a recommendation there. I love these mock-ups you have of like the trade booth. These look really good. And then something like we've talked about on some of these other portfolios, just kind of like putting a bow on it, right? So you kind of talked about that you made a bunch of deliverables for this company, but you didn't really talk about the problem. You didn't really talk about your process and you didn't talk about the solution. So I would focus a bit more on telling that story about how you came to make all these assets. What was the effect that they had on the business? Do you have any stats to back that up? that would help make these a lot more impactful. And then I would know how you could contribute value to my company, right? So this next project, Humble Games, I'm familiar with them. So that's cool you worked uh, with them on this. It looks like you created some banner ads. Here it says they gave you key artwork to work with, uh, which is great that you're kind of letting people know up front so that way people aren't assuming that these sort of illustrations are in your wheelhouse necessarily, but it might be nice to show that key artwork and then show these banners after, so that way I know the amount of work that you did, right? Like hearing that there was key artwork and you made these banners, I don't know if you just kind of dragged and dropped some things and, and it was really easy to do, or did you have to like illustrate some pieces yourself? So it'd be nice to see how much work actually went into this, so we can kind of like be impressed if they're, they're a lot different than the key artwork. And then let's look at one more. Let's check out Chuck's Burger Redesign. Nice, so this is cool. I like, um, I like all these mock-ups you have here, like you're showing it in the real world with like a delivery driver, you're showing it on the pint glass, that's really cool. I will say this feels a little bit sparse, right? And again, it's all kind of this masonry grid is very wide. So making it just maybe two items per row would make it a lot easier for me to get in and see the details. Right now it feels a little bit underwhelming when it's just this amount of scrolling shows the whole project. But I think you have the assets here you just need to tell more of the story again. So show us the concepts. Why is it two stars, right? Why did you choose this font? Why are these icons important? Like you have this really cool looking character here as an icon, but I can't really see it very well. And I don't know who he is or why that's an icon. So just doing a bit more storytelling, I think would go a long way for these projects. Yeah, so this is really nice. I like that you have um, your resume on the website. That makes it really easy for me just to kind of have everything in one place. And this is a really cool idea I haven't seen on a ton of portfolios, but I like it a lot where you have a fun stuff tab to where you can just kind of put bits and bobs that don't have a ton of story or strategy behind them necessarily, but you're still showing off what you're passionate about. It tells me that you actually like design, right? So you're not just doing it from a nine to five, you're going home and working on this stuff. You're making Kobe animations. And I love this work too. It shows some really nice animation here. So yeah, that's that's an awesome idea, Alec. I might have to steal that from you, but awesome work. But yeah, overall, great portfolio. I love how simple it is from a layout standpoint. I love the little fun touches of personality you have in there. The fact that you're only two years into your career and you already have this kind of work up there um, is really impressive. So keep it up. All right, guys, I hope you got something of value out of today's video. 
Remember, if you'd like me to review your portfolio in the next episode, leave a link to your work in the comments. Thanks so much for tuning in. Go out there and make a ruckus.